lost, to worry, fear, or struggle. It's time to declare an end to what is holding you back. Jesus came so that we can live in freedom. And He is coming again so that we can experience freedom forever. Hello, hello, how are you today? Let's welcome our South Shore campus, Tampa. What's happening? Come on, let's thank God. Woo! Amen, amen, and amen. South Shore, I know that you are like the Tampa campus. Your arms are just about worn out from thanking God for all the men and women who've served our great nation. Can we thank him again? We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you and we love you. God is so good. Thank you for your sacrifice. Father, we pray that today as we open your holy word that we'd be changed from the inside out, that when we leave today we would leave better, we would leave uh, having uh, ascertained your will and having determined to follow you in all that you do. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. We're starting a brand new series today called The End, The End. End. Now, we're, we're moving in history toward the end. I want to talk about uh, the prophetic picture of what that looks like first Wednesday in November, uh, excuse me, in December. Don't miss that. The prophetic picture of the end. However near or far the end is in the prophetic timetable, we want to announce and pronounce today the end of some spiritual dynamics that keep us drifting. And then we want to gain some truths that launch us into our destiny. Here's the big idea today. Today is the end of doing it my way. Today is the end of doing it my way. Turn to your neighbor right here in that South Shore and say, today's the day when doing it my way ends. And if you're married, you got to smile at that one. Ha <laughs> ha! Turn in your Bibles with me to Malachi 1.1 and Romans 8.15. Malachi 1.1 and Romans 8.15. Somebody said, Pastor, is that pronounced Malachi? I said, well, if you want it to be, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Malachi or Malachi, either one, in Romans 8, 15. Here's what the scripture says. Um, one through five, New International Version. A uh, hundred years out of Babylonian uh, exile, the country's come back. They've rebuilt the temple, and the temple is falling into disrepair. And the people are losing their zeal and fervency for the Lord, their relationship with God. And so the prophet steps up, last book of the Old Testament, before the intertestamental period, 400 years when God was completely silent, and then Jesus breaks on the scene. You've got John, the disciple, the, the Baptist who comes, and then Jesus breaks into the scene just before that period of time, stretch of 400 years, you've got this prophet to the post-exilic uh, exiles now who have returned and built the temple, but they have lost their zeal for God. They've lost their zeal for the temple, the church. And so Malachi speaks to them. Here's what he says. One, an oracle, the word of the Lord to Israel. This is the southern kingdom, Judah, who had survived. Babylon conquered the northern kingdom uh, long before this. Through Malachi, the prophet, I have loved you. I have loved you, says the Lord. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? Uh, do your kids stand in your house at times and say, uh, how have you loved me, mom and dad? And you're saying, there's a roof over your head in the name of Jesus. And you sleep in a bed in the name of Jesus. And you eat my food in the name of Jesus. And you drive the car I paid for in the name of Jesus. And we're in Disney in the name of Jesus. And so the people ask back to the Lord, but how have you loved us? And, uh, and then he goes on and he says, was not Esau Jacob's brother, the two twins, Jacob and Esau, the Lord says, yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated, I'll explain. And I have turned his mountain, Esau's mountains, into the wasteland and left his inheritance, what should have been his, to the desert jackals. These are two twin boys born to Isaac and Rebekah, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Isaac then has two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob becomes the father of the 12 tribes who today is Israel, Israel, the nation of Israel, uh, and through whom Jesus Christ's lineage comes to you and to me, the father Abraham, 
through Jacob and his lineage, right from Malachi through the intertestamental period to Matthew where Jesus, who is the Christ, was born. And by the way, that's my lineage and it's yours. Can we say hallelujah? We say hallelujah in the name of Jesus. A four, here's the distinction. Edom is the nation that separated from the other twin that comes from Esau. They're in Assyria and Pakistan and Libya and Iran and Iraq and all of those nations. The Edomites, they're the other twin brother, uh, otherwise known as Palestine. Edom may say, they may say, the other brother, though we've been crushed, we will rebuild the ruins. But this is what the Lord Almighty says. They may rebuild Palestine, all of those who carry that name and that heritage that come back to Esau, but I will demolish They will be called the wicked land, a people always under the wrath of the Lord. You will see it with your own eyes and say, great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. You see, in legal terms, one was hated and one was loved. Esau was hated because he despised his birthright. He despised his birthright. He was the firstborn son. Uh, Jacob was behind him as a twin. It said they came out and Jacob had a hold of his his ankle. And God changed Jacob's name from the supplanter, the one who holds on to, to Israel, the one loved by God. But Jacob uh, inherited the birthright because Esau sold it for a bowl of soup. The fleshly man in scripture is Esau. Do you understand? The man who is so overcome by flesh that he cannot wait, that he cannot obey his father, and he gives up the greatest thing that would ever come to him in his life because his flesh demands it to be so. We are in the heritage of Jacob, the biblical inheritance, the man who inherits the blessing. On Facebook some time ago, uh, the Shemitah has come and gone. You heard me teaching about the Shemitah in, in September in the time period. And, and so we were looking through that period of time. And I heard somebody on Facebook say, I survived another end of time. The end of the world came and I survived again. And so here, here's what I would say. Just like Lee Corso. Uh, some of you know Lee Corso, right? ESPN, little channel. <laughs> not so fast, my friend, not so fast. There are many, many harbingers that are still occurring in the season of the Shemitah. Do not lose your edge. Do not say, everything is just fine. Listen, we're moving toward the end, and it all has to do with Israel. It all has to do with Israel, church. Our government or the current administration has legalized marijuana. Back when I was growing up, you smoked pot, and it was illegal. Anybody in here? Maybe y'all are handed out in the parking lot. What's going on? Pastor, I love it. We've also legalized gay marriage. We have socialized our medicine. The American medical system is all but socialized in the United States of America. Can anyone anywhere, show me where socialism has worked in the world. Can anyone, anywhere, anywhere, anybody, Bueller, anyone, anybody, show me where socialism has worked because it doesn't work. Our, our debt is $18.5 trillion. How well does it work in your house when you spend more than you have? <laughs> and if that's not enough, we have partnered now through the Iran nuclear deal uh, with an enemy. Listen, the largest state-sponsored terrorist organization on planet Earth. Matter of fact, in all of world history, the United States of America has partnered with that group. We have partnered with Esau Church. And God says, those who are for Israel, I will bless. Those who bless Israel, I will bless. And those who curse Israel, I will curse. And so I want you to see this, uh, this little Benjamin Netanyahu, okay, he's obviously the prime minister of Israel. And then uh, Mahmoud Abbas, he's the prime minister there in Palestine. And I want you to know, we've picked the wrong brother. Church, listen to me. How come it's so quiet in here in the name of Jesus? We've picked the wrong brother. We have, we have alienated our, our greatest ally and we have uh, brought into our bosom in agreement with resources and all that we are, Esau, the wrong brother. We've isolated those who we should be for and those who we should be against, we've brought near to us. Do you think America has gone a little too far? Do you think so? How long do you think the Lord will tolerate a nation in apostasy? Come on, church, now listen. How long do you think God will tolerate a nation that pushes him out and and then then sides with an enemy? This is a biblical enemy. 
I'm not talking about a political enemy. This is a biblical enemy. I'm talking about those. And so when you look at Palestine and those who come from Edom, they want to kill Israel, don't they? I'll bless those who bless Israel. I'll curse those who curse Israel. And so here's what I want, here's what I want to say to you. Listen, I don't know if the end is today. If the end is today, hallelujah, I'm ready. My sunroof is open. I'm going. If the end is today, Jesus can come and we're going to be with him in paradise. But if the end is a thousand years from now, we're going to preach the gospel, we're going to love, we're going to serve, we're going to declare Jesus as Lord, we're going to lift him up, we're going to help people, we're going to baptize, we're going to go into all nations and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to keep doing what God called us to do. We are not shaken. We're not shaken. You've got to understand the biblical history. You've got to understand God saying to a nation, I have loved you. I have loved you. And the nation saying, uh, look, how have you loved us, God? Just think about all that you have. Think of, everybody take a deep breath. It's a gift. If you don't think it's a gift, go visit somebody who's got pulmonary or cardiac disease in the hospital. If you don't think it's a gift. When you sit down for lunch today, when you eat your food, it's a gift from the Lord. In the United States of America, the safety, the, the sovereignty, the peace, the, all that comes from the Lord. Here's what I want you to know. And I want you to say this with me. I am overwhelmingly loved in the Lord. See, look, you have an inheritance. You're not an orphan. He's never left you and he's never forsaken you. I don't know where you come from. I don't know uh, what, what the picture is in your life. I don't know if you're religious or non-religious. And, and by the way, I want you to know the church of the Crossing Church is non-religious. We're about relationship. Okay? In the name of Jesus, um, I want you to pray for a young name uh, named Matthias. Yesterday, he came to the services, and he came in in the back, and, and he said, I don't know Jesus. I'm pretty mad at pastors. I hate the church, and so on. And at the end of the conversation, about an hour of conversation, he trusted Christ as a Savior. He gave his life to Jesus. Okay, but, and this is, so here, here's his own testimony. He says, I should be out partying with my friends. I ended up in the church. What am I doing here? And I said, I think I know. <laughs> I think I know. Listen, say this with me. I'm not an orphan. Even if you feel like that, even if you had bumps and bruises, a whole deal, an orphan has no name, they have no family, they have no inheritance. They don't know the love of the Father. An orphan has to succeed on his or her own. They're scheming and manipulation and control. This is Esau. An orphan strives to gain approval and acceptance. There's constant competition. There's the need to stand out. There's isolation and independence and fear and insecurity mark that life. We're going to get rid of the orphan spirit in the name of Jesus. Come on, say this with me. You're going to see this. This is one point preaching today. Say, I am loved. I, am loved. I, have, a father. I have a faithful father. Star Wars is back out, is it not? <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Sounds a little like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know, I tried. <laughs> Luke finds out that Anakin is his father, right? But, but listen, he has a spiritual father in Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I want to, I, I, this is a writable, if you're a note taker, write this one down. Let your heavenly father inform you regarding your earthly fathers. Let your heavenly father inform you about your earthly fathers. Let your heavenly father inform you about how much he loves you and what your inheritance is and what your destiny is and who he is to you and what he's gonna do for you and why he loves you and how he loves you and who you are in him. Because if you don't understand and you don't get that, you're gonna wander in this life. You're gonna wonder why Christianity doesn't work. You're gonna wonder why your bank account doesn't work, why your relationships don't work, why you don't get healed, why your prayers don't get answered. Here's what the Lord said. Here's the scripture, here's what he said. Romans 8 15. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. You are not so afraid that you're not going to receive a meal that you take your inheritance, which is everything that God gives to you, and you sell it for a bowl of soup. I talked to Matthias last night, and he said, but I'm going to leave here, and then I'm going to have to go face the, the stuff in my house. And I said, in the name of Jesus, go face it with a newfound faith and a new power. Yeah. See, go face it differently. God did not give you, say me, me, a spirit of fear. You're not a slave anymore. You've been set free from Egypt. But you received the spirit of sonship and daughtership. Lady, say, hey, hey. hey, hey. I didn't forget about you. <laughs> and by him we cry, Abba, Father. He's a gracious father. He's a good father. He's a loving father. And Abba in the scripture is this, this terminology like, I'm going to run into daddy's arms and he's going to hold on to me. Do you remember what your dad smelled like? 
God, I hope you did. I remember what my dad smelled like, and then he was my biological dad, and then he wasn't in my life, and, and, uh, and, and those hugs and those relationships, that, 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 those good things. And I had a, I had a wonderful dad who was a, you call him stepdad, but he's my dad. He's my dad. But listen, this heavenly father is greater in every way than any earthly father than any earthly father. And you're not a slave. You don't have to act like a slave. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Say, I'm God's child. child. Now, if we're children, then we're heirs. And we're heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in the sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Share in his glory. See, when I was in seminary, I, I I was searching for a mentor. And I wanted a spiritual mentor. I I, you know, my biological father, not really there that much. My, my stepfather, who's really my father, was a, a great father. He was always there. Um, but I was looking for a spiritual, somebody show me the scripture. Somebody teach me the scripture. Somebody quote me the scripture. So my second year of seminary, and I'm, I'm watching the Jesus film. Remember the old school Jesus film? And, and uh, I'd been praying for an hour or so, maybe two hours, and I came downstairs, and the film was running, and uh, on the film, it was uh, Jesus walking uh, near the Jordan River. And he was about to go to his baptism, and you'll remember that he he comes to John, and he says, John, I want you to baptize me. And John goes, whoa, you're the Christ. Uh, I'm not going to baptize you. And he says, baptize me now so that all things would become complete. And so he takes Jesus, John, the disciple, and he puts him in the water of the Jordan. He brings him out of the water. Now, I'm watching this sitting in my little living room uh, in seminary on the hill there in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, if you remember what the scripture says, it's like the Lord dialed in and he dialed so clearly in and Jesus comes out of the water and it said, the spirit descends like a dove. And then there's an audible voice. So you need to hear this, an audible voice. And God, the father says about Jesus, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And so that, that morning, God said to me, Greg Dumas, you are my son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen, Cindy, Ann, Mike, Bill, John. You need to hear God say to you, you are my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Church, it changes everything. Mike, you're my son in whom I'm well pleased. You need to hear that voice said specifically to you. You've got to receive the love of God. Uh, How many of you have kids? How many of you have kids? Do you remember when they were innocent? When they were free, nobody had made fun of them. They hadn't failed yet. They hadn't been picked on or they hadn't been compared with their sibling or any of those other things. Uh, we have two girls and both of them would, would come out and they would do the little, I call it the little girl twirl. And then so they'd put a dress on and they would come out and they'd go, daddy. And they'd do this little deal right here. I said, you know, you know what every woman in the world wants to know? Am I beautiful? Am I pursuable? Am I worth somebody noticing me? Do I have worth? Is there, is there, will somebody notice me and recognize me? And do I have worth in this world? Will people listen to me? It's not just about outward beauty. It's about being beautiful. And I want you to know, listen, your heavenly father thinks you're beautiful. Amen. See, but you've got to get back to that place of being a little girl when you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s so that you're uninhibited and you can put on a sparkly dress and go to work and twirl. <laughs> you've got to have it. Church, you gotta have it. You gotta be able to twirl even when things aren't going good. You gotta be able to twirl when things are going bad in your marriage. You gotta be able to twirl in front of your heavenly father who loves you. He loves you. And you gotta know that you're safe and you gotta know that you're secure and you gotta know that the world is secure. You gotta know that you're loved. You gotta know that he honors you and blesses you and he has favor for you. How many of you, you have little guys, I have a, a little, you know, little boy, he's nine, and he's always going like this, dad. <laughs> right? Your little guys are like this, look at this. They do this, don't they? Look at this. You know what every man in the world wants to know? That they're strong. And no matter how big your biceps are, they wanna know, am I strong? Am I going to be valued, listened to, respected? Do I have a place in this world? And listen to me, men. You need need to know that your heavenly father loves you enough that you would come out and and, and some of the stuff that they do when they're kids, you know, they're innocent. There's no shame in their game, men. 
My little guy's flexing and he's turning red. His little veins are sticking out. His muscles about that big. <laughs> Woo! But you know what? He, it, look, when you're covered in the Father, you need that strength in your office. You need that strength in your marriage. You need that strength in school. You need that strength in the military. Hoorah. You've got to have that strength. And, and you've got to know that God loves you and that you're safe and that you're not going to fail. And even if you do fail, you have a heavenly father that's right there with you. I don't know what your circumstances look like, but my heritage comes from Jacob, not Esau. So let's do two practical things. Let's surrender our will because I have, a, I have a heavenly father that loves me. I'm gonna just surrender. I'm gonna surrender my will and I'm gonna surrender my way. I'm gonna just say to the Lord, Lord Jesus, you know what you know and you've ordered my steps and I know that you have a perfect plan for my life and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna surrender because I'm a son and I'm gonna surrender because I'm a daughter. I'm not gonna be like Esau and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna gonna not measure my life very well and I'm gonna stay out hunting all day and I'm gonna come in and then I'm gonna take the very essence of my life which is following Jesus Christ and I'm gonna sacrifice it over a temporary terminal thing. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna listen to you, I'm gonna walk with you, I'm 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 gonna talk with you, I'm gonna listen to what you say, I'm gonna trust that you love me. I'm gonna trust that you're gonna work it out for me. I'm gonna trust, but I'm gonna take my will and put it on the altar. And so here's the practical thing. What's the one or two things that you want more than anything in your whole life? Come on, single people, in the name of Jesus, put them on the altar. (laughs) Put him or her and the life that you're looking for on the altar. Maybe it's resources. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's something that God, maybe it's healing. Maybe it's whatever it is. I want you to take the greatest thing that you wish in your will that you had, and I want you to lay it on the altar before your heavenly father and say to him, I trust you. I know that you're a good father. I know that you have a plan for my life. You have a plan for my life. I know you do. You know, back here, one of the greatest things that, you know, my desire is to see our church and, and to see God do it and do all, you know, the churches in all of this region, to see him full with people and watch people like Matthias come to the Lord. I lost track of time yesterday because one of the greatest things in all the world is to watch somebody get it and understand that Jesus loves them and come out of darkness into light. That's one of the greatest things in the whole world. And so we have, <clears throat> we've had this little, we've had this little thing at the Tampa campus, this little driving issue, and you know it's been years. And all the way back four years ago, at some point in time, there's this little space here, 60 linear feet, to drive out uh, to 301. And so there's been contention for it, and it's been my will. I said, Father, open this, Father, open this, Father, open this. And the Lord said, No, 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 uh, uh, no. And so I prayed more. And the Lord gave me this scripture in Proverbs 22, 28, and it says, do not remove the ancient boundary stone. And I found out through the submission to the Lord that uh, the previous pastor before me here at the Crossing Church at the Tampa campus had signed a document that said we'd never drive on that road. Dang! (laughs) So now the right thing to do is to listen to the Lord and then to honor that contract, isn't it? That's the right thing to do. You'd say, well, no, I don't think so. I'm a business person. I do X, Y, Z. Well, that's great from a business perspective. I'm talking about following a heavenly father. So in following the heavenly father, you listen to the scripture. Uh, he says, do not remove the ancient boundary stone. And through, through the years, now one time, the parking was so bad at the crossing church, it would go back all the way to four years ago. People were waiting 40 minutes in the back parking lot to get out of church. Now, 40 minutes is too long. That's why I don't go to the ball games in the name of Jesus. That's why I don't go to Disney, because the mouse is evil anyway. Anyhow, you know, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love Disney. It's awesome. Just make sure you have your wallet out. All right, so <clears throat> the point was the lines. The point is the lines and, and, and the drama and the stuff, and you've been so patient. It's been years. And as soon as we, listen, as soon as we submitted our will, say, I submit my will. God, open a piece of property right here next to us, 11 and a half acres, and the road is going to be done in a few weeks, and we're going to have access in and out. Listen, at the Tampa campus, it's coming at the South Shore campus too, I and mean, you just get, you just grow and have people and so on, and God is good. We're going to drive on the road in a couple of weeks, and don't you think that we're not going to give God his glory? On the 19th and 20th, we're going to have a big ribbon cutting and the whole thing. We're going to, we're, but we're going to drive on it and practice for a little while. Be Christians. <laughs> be Christians to each other. When you come in, don't lose your Christianity. Now, now, now listen, I, w- I want to speak to you today. I want to speak to you. What do you want more than anything in your life? 
that you need to surrender in your will. Heavenly Father, I am not an Esau, I'm a Jacob. And I have an inheritance in you and I'm going to trust you and I'm gonna take that thing and I'm going to lay it on the altar. I'm gonna listen to you in scripture, I'm gonna pray and whatever you tell me to do, I'm gonna do it. And by the way, I have a plan because we've all got plans. I've got a plan, but I'm gonna let you order my plan. I'm gonna let you, see look, uh, when we're talking about our will, Jesus was in the garden. He knew that he was going to the cross. Luke twenty two forty two. 42. Father, if you're willing. Come on, say it with me. Father, if you're willing. Okay, now this is, this is getting a yes or no. You're saying to God, I'm clearing the slate. Yes or no. Take this cup from me. Lord, please let us drive on the road. No. The answer is no. Do you know that God's no is still in his blessing? Come on, church, right? It's still in his blessing. You just got to orient yourself to the no. No kid likes the no. But God's no is often yes. He just reorients a different way. And so Jesus surrenders, yet not my will. Say, not my will. will. I give it up to you, God. I'm not not an Esau. I'm a Jacob. I'm going to inherit. I'm going to inherit from you my life. But your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done be done. Your will be done. And then when you give God your will, we want to say, God, I have a plan and I'm surrendering my will. Now I'm surrendering my way. Because in my mind and in your mind, do you, I don't know if you're kind of a type A person or whatever, and you, even something like a, a, you know, your kid's birthday party, and you're like, and at this time we're going to do this, and this is going to happen like this, and this is going to happen like this, and this is going to happen like this. That's great. Have a plan, but get ready to adapt. Otherwise, you're going to be getting, you know, ice cream off your blouse and hating everybody who's there. I'm so happy we're having a birthday today. I want to kill you. <laughs> you got to keep your joy. You got to surrender. You got to surrender your will and the way. Watch this. Uh, surrender your way. Matthew 2, the scripture says that Joseph was sleeping. An angel appeared to him in a dream. They were living in Bethlehem. I want, this is a major deal. You're living in your house, wherever you are, an angel shows up to you at night and he says, I want you to get up. I know that you just had a baby, all right? And, and, and you know, I don't know, I don't know how the, the health care was there, the plan. I don't, know, I don't know what the suite was like when Mary delivered Jesus. And the angel says, I want you to get up, both of you got a brand new baby, and I want you to go 400 miles. I want you to walk 400 miles to Egypt because Herod's trying to kill this baby Jesus. Get up and go. And so do you think When Joseph and Mary surrendered their will to the Lord, do you think that they uh, thought that their way was going to be to stay in Bethlehem? Maybe, I don't know. But you know how long 400 miles is to walk? It's about a month of walking. It's a month. Anybody anybody here walked a month before? I just walked a month before, like, I don't have a car, I'm going to (laughs) die. Acts chapter 10. Peter's instructed in a vision to get up that the gospel is going to go not just to the Jews, but to all the nation, the Gentiles in the world, it's going to spread. And they used, he used a dietary law, so much so that it was kosher for Jews. And if you, if you break the kosher laws as a Jew, you're not Jewish anymore. That's how deep it was. And so they, he surrenders his will to the Lord. Lord, I'm going to do your will. And then God says, also my way. Also my way. It's not, it's a, uh, you have a way, but it's not the right way. Listen to my way. God has a particular plan for you. It's his way. It's his way. I want you, it's, it's, it's my way. It's my way. And then Paul in Acts chapter 16, he sees a man in a vision and uh, he intends to go to Corinth. He's going to go across the sea to Corinth. And the man says in the vision, he says, I want you to get up and I want you to go to Macedonia. I want you to go north. 280 mile walk. This is about two weeks. And I want you to go listen to the man in the vision. And so here's what I want to declare to you today. Acts chapter two, it says, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy in the name of Jesus. Your sons and your daughters are going to dream. Listen, they're going to prophesy and hear from the Lord. Your young men and your young women are going to see visions in the name of Jesus. Your old men and your old women are going to dream dreams. Would you receive that today, Crossing Church? Would you receive that today, Crossing Church? Would you get on your face? Get on your face and say to God, God, you have my life. God, you have my job. God, you have my marriage. God, you have my church. 
God, you have my school, you have my college, you have my institution. God, you have it. I am not Esau, I'm Jacob. I'm in the favored inheritance. I know that you love me. I know that I'm going to be dressed up. I know that I'm going to be afraid. So what I said to Matthias yesterday, I said, are you afraid? He said, yeah. I said, go face your fear. Amen. Go face the things that you need to face because we're not, you see, courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is doing it afraid. Courage is just doing it afraid. God, I t- you take my will and you take the way and I'm surrendering to you. You see, listen, I want you to say this with me. Today, Today is, the is the end. Today is the end, is the end. of doing it my way. It my way. Amen? Yes. Amen. <laughs> let's, uh, let's bow our heads, both campuses. How many of you today, you'd say, uh, and just to indicate by the raising of hands, you'd say, I want to surrender my will. I don't want to do it my way anymore. I don't want to do it my way. Raise your hands nice and tall all over the house, south shore together. You keep them up as a declaration. Don't raise them. Don't raise them if you don't mean it. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your sovereignty, for your blessing. I thank you for a great inheritance. I thank you for a great love, a love that's so amazing, so constant, so perfect that it allows us to be young inside, vibrant, full of grace, thoughtful, joyful, engaging, being loved so that we can love. And I thank you, God, that our heritage is that of Jacob and it's not of Esau. And I thank you in the name of Jesus that you give us the power to live this life as we surrender our will and the way that we do it. In Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said. Now, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, just one last thing. If you've never given your life to Christ, you'd say today, man, I, I, uh, I want to give my life to Jesus. We're all going to make that confession together here in at South Shore. Every voice, would you say, Lord Jesus, on this day, I choose to give you my life. I yield. Take my sin. Take my mistakes. Take my brokenness. Take my shame. In exchange. Come on, I want you to mean it. Say, in exchange, exchange. I receive. receive. Say, I receive salvation. I I place my faith in Jesus. Thank you for your death on the cross. I could never make it on my own. I I freely receive you. In Jesus' name. Now, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I'm going to ask you to indicate to us by raising your hand. Just on the count of three, both campuses at home, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, be real brave. On the count of three, one, two, three, raise your hand if you prayed that way. Raise your hand. I see you. So fantastic, young man. Ma'am, sir, I see you. Hallelujah. Family, I see you. I got you, brother. Ma'am, I see you. Sir, awesome. Balcony, hallelujah. I see you. I see you, gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Can we thank the risen Savior today? (laughs) Hallelujah, why don't we stand together, let's stand. So I'm gonna ask you, and I'd love all the movement, if the movement could be towards the front, prayer partners, you come now. Listen, if you need prayer for anything in the world, let's make the church your altar. You need prayer for a relationship, for finances, you trusted Christ. We want to connect with you. We want to help you get started in your relationship. A final prayer, a couple of verses here in this song. Stay in an attitude of worship, and then Pastor Stan's going to come and close us. Father, we love you. Thank you for the grace you give us today to walk in you in Jesus' name. Come now. Come now.